Hello everyone and welcome to another episode by the Wallington Twins. Now, don't I have a treat for you today? So in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at property in the metaverse and why you in particular should be paying attention right now because there's never been a time like this. So thanks for watching and let's get into it. Now, when you think about buying this digital real estate, right now is exactly how it was 250 years ago when people were buying property in whether it be New York or even Vancouver. And with this said, there are tons of different investment firms right now that are spending millions in acquiring this property. Now, metaverse real estate actually isn't all that different from real estate in the real world. I say this because these owners in the digital world of the real estate, they're turning these digital properties into malls or even arcades or games, really any way to create that secondary income, just like people would in real life, or whether it be commercial space, they're renting it out. So in a nutshell, the whole idea of owning this digital real estate, or especially in the eyes of some of these investors or these big investment companies, companies is they want to buy this land and then they want to rent it out just like you would in real life. So before we jump into the heart of this video, I do want to say that buying this digital real estate is still definitely a very risky investment. So now that that disclaimer is out there, let's jump into why this digital asset is so valuable. So what exactly led to this virtual reality real estate boom? And what were some of the variables that created this demand? Let's first start off by taking a look at Andrew Kegel, the founder of tokens.com. Tokens.com is an investment firm that specializes in investing in this digital real estate. Okay, and, and why did you think this virtual land was worth two and a half million? Well, there's a lot of attributes about virtual land that are similar to real land. So for example, there's a scarcity to it. There's location value if there's a lot of visitor traffic there and there's the utility from it. And so I think if you were to imagine the metaverse like a monopoly board, but rather than having you know just 28 parcels of land and eight players, there's many more parcels of land that you can develop and potentially millions and millions of users that you can collect rent from and you can create immersive experiences for. So going off of what Andrew Kegel was talking about, there's actually only a few different platforms that are super popular where this digital land is being purchased. And it's important to note that this digital land is being purchased with each platform's native cryptocurrency token. And within these platforms, there's a finite supply of land available. And this is what in turn creates the value because of the fact that it's so finite and therefore it's going to be more rare to purchase. So continuing to look forward here at what actually adds value to this digital real estate, there is another large investment firm called Republic Realm, where in November, they spent the largest ever acquisition of digital real estate at 4.3 million in Sandbox. So that's why I think what Republic Realm does is so interesting. We've invested across 19 different metaverse platforms already. So we're not just betting on this one. We mm -hmm. look at all of the metaverse platforms we come across. So today, for example, we're tracking over 180 different metaverse platforms and new ones are being announced every week. The allure of working with experts like us and investing through our investment vehicles is that you get exposure to a broad diversified portfolio. So instead of buying one spec home in Tallahassee, which nobody would ever advocate as a great real estate investment strategy, you're investing in something that's much more like a nationwide diversified REIT. So just like in the real world, a lot of the value in these digital properties are going to be set based on where they are located in the metaverse of that native world that they have. So if you're gonna be located in the center area where a lot of people are spawning or joining that metaverse, a lot of this property is gonna be even more expensive. Or if there's a ton of large companies that have acquired acquired that digital real estate in a certain area, this again will also help to increase the value. So by now you're probably thinking like, why are these companies spending so much money on acquiring this digital real estate? And I mean, it's quite simple. It's like any other big firm in the real world. They're hoping that consumers are gonna come into the metaverse and people are gonna start buying. They're gonna be buying residential homes. They're gonna be investing in certain products. They're hoping and banking that normal people are gonna be spending money in that metaverse. Think about it this way. The, the metaverse is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity that's going to change the way most consumer technology is used. 
people don't quite see this yet, but it's the next iteration of social media. It's the next iteration of computing, education, advertising, and shopping. And so when you put all this together, it's really going to change the way the internet is used. If you want to sort of envision what it is that we're doing by buying this virtual land, mm -hmm. we're going to aim to be a virtual landlord in the metaverse. And we're in a sense, pre-purchasing advertising space. Another very large purchase that was made in Decentraland this time, not Sandbox, is by tokens.com. And they spent $2.5 million in a very, very popular area in Decentraland. And I know that their goal from reading what Andrew Kegel had to say, and also watching some of his videos is their goal is to make it the Rodeo drive of the metaverse. So all of these expensive brands and luxury brands that we know today, Coach, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all these guys, they are hoping that they need space that they're gonna rent out, they're gonna rent it from tokens.com, and in turn, these brands won't have to remake or develop or anything like that. It's gonna be as simple as if you're gonna rent out space in the real world. You're just gonna rent it out from tokens.com, tokens.com is gonna make the Rodeo Drive of the metaverse, and that is how it's gonna be. So I mean, it's not too hard to understand the concept behind tokens.com. Another question that you might be thinking of right now is, okay, well, let's say I wanna get started or I wanna acquire some of this land. Well, let's start with the first question there. So if you were looking to actually build your own real estate in the digital world, first off, you would have to find a metaverse, whether it's Sandbox or Decentraland, there's a, a bunch of different ones out there. Decentraland and Sandbox are the two most popular, but the way that you'd start is actually pretty similar to how you would in the real world. First off, you'd hire an architect, you'd get them to make a bunch of blueprints, a bunch of different designs. You might make a mood board based on what sort of mood you wanna go with. And then from there, what would happen is you would get a renderer to create renderings for you. And then the last step is you would hire a game developer to bring this into the actual digital world. And this is where it's gonna be a little different, obviously, compared to the real world. So if by now you're still thinking, okay, well, I still can't wrap my head around this digital space. One way to think of it is like, these metaverse lands, whether it be Decentraland or Sandbox, they're almost like large Etsy or Amazon companies because they're banking on the fact that other companies are gonna come to their metaverse and buy this real estate from them so that in turn, there's gonna be a ton of different products in that area. So, I mean, you can think of it like as a more 3D Amazon or Etsy. With this said though, buying or building this real estate isn't the only way people people are looking to make money in the metaverse. One of the ways that people are looking to make quite a bit of money is by advertising. So what you could do right now is you could go into this, any metaverse really, and you could purchase land that for whatever reason you find you think is gonna be valuable. Maybe it's beside an Adidas or a Visa or a MasterCard or a Nike, one of those, and you think, you know what? there's a good shot that this property may be worth something. What you could do is actually buy that land and then people or sorry, advertisers or commercial companies, they can come to you and they can advertise on your real estate. And that way, when people come into the metaverse, that different advertising is gonna be right there for them to see. So you don't always have to just buy a space in hopes that you're going to rent it out or that you can even resell it. There is another way to make money and that's in the form of advertising. So far I've mentioned investing in your own digital real estate and potentially building it on your own, or you can purchase for your commercial business, different spaces, and then sell your products out of there. But I do wanna mention that of course, this is still very risky and no one knows where this is going. So one of the risks that's important to mention is that in these different metaverses, because they have their own native cryptocurrency, a lot of things affect cryptocurrency as a whole. I mean, we've already seen when Elon Musk makes a tweet, it makes Bitcoin drop. And when Bitcoin drops, Bitcoin is a massive market follower, especially with these smaller cryptocurrencies. So there's a lot of different variables that can make the value of something in that metaverse drop. And if the native cryptocurrency of that metaverse drops, for example, sand in sandbox, if that drops, of course, the value you and your property will drop as well. So with that said, there are different ways to mitigate the risk. And in my opinion, I think that you should be buying digital property in different metaverses. So what I'll do is I'll end with this. What do I actually think about the metaverse and what should the people watching potentially do here? And again, I wanna say that this isn't financial advice. This is just my opinion. 
So right now, if you had invested in cryptocurrency five to 10 years ago, you would be a very, very wealthy person. And the time that we're living in right now when it comes to NFTs or cryptocurrency, a lot of this digital real estate is, this is almost like when the internet first came out and people were looking at it like, what are we gonna do with this? I don't understand. This makes no sense to me. This is how a lot of people think of NFTs right now in digital real estate. So if I were you, which is what I've been doing because I am a realtor, you should be diving hard into what actually needs to happen to make this digital real estate do well, because there is going to be a time where this is going to be more mainstream. And if you look at the data right now, there's still only 5% of people that are even looking into this space, which is very, very small. Another huge reason why this space has exploded is because of Mark Zuckerberg's announcement that Facebook was going to turn into meta, which would in turn follow their logic into where they think this technology sector is going. So they're going to be creating their own metaverse and it's going to be an exciting time because a lot is going to happen. But this was a massive reason why a lot of these different digital properties increased in value as well. So I'll end with this. And I do want to say this. This is just my opinion. This is not financial advice, but I do heavily believe that if you are somebody that wants to create generational wealth, this is a fantastic time to be doing that. And I don't say this just because I'm a realtor. I mean, I'm a realtor in the real world. There are realtors in the digital world, and that is something that we are looking into. But I say this because right now is almost how the internet was years ago, where a lot of people didn't understand what could happen from it, what could actually be done. This is how a lot of people are looking at NFTs in the crypto space. People don't foresee how this is going to be a big part of our lives. But I've Launched, launched a couple of NFT projects now, and it's clear the factors that these things play. It's basically a membership that you're buying into people that you believe. It's going to be everywhere soon. We're going to go to coffee shops. You're going to scan your NFT. You're going to get 10% off, or there's going to be a group of co coffee shops all with the same NFT, where when you go there, you scan it, you get a discount. It's going to be the same with clothing. Adidas is already sending clothing if you own their NFT, free clothing for you, for your size. This is happening whether we like it or not. So there's a lot of people that are gonna be hating on this space just because they don't understand it. But what I'm doing and what I would encourage everybody to do is spend 40 to 80 hours really studying this space and figure out what even is this? How can I actually make money on things that I know about? I told a friend the other day that's in the HVAC industry, look how a potential NFT or look how potential digital real estate could help your company because there's going to be a void that needs to be filled by these different trades companies. So right now, I think it's a great time to get into this space. And I know that as I move forward with my real estate career, our plan is to open Canada's largest crypto friendly brokerage in Canada. And I mean, it's inevitable. It's it's going to be here forever. And this digital real estate, I want our brokerage to be seen by eyes everywhere. I want people to spawn into the metaverse, see our brokerage, come out of it, come into the real world, see our brokerage again. And I want new agents to be like, these guys are everywhere. So that's our plan. But I mean, that's to do with the realtor side of things. This video was mainly about what you could do as a consumer buying digital real estate. So with that said, I want to say thank you to everybody watching. I've received a ton of DMs on Instagram and even people reaching out to me on other platforms. But if you do want to reach me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is below or you can just check it out. It's Davis Wallington Real Estate. And this was another video brought to you by the Wallington Twins. And we haven't uploaded for a while just because of a few different things with COVID. But I mean, we're back. We're going to be making videos on a regular basis and we want to showcase a lot more NFT type stuff. So I want to say thank you for watching. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. All right, guys, thanks and take care.